JSON server is a really cool system for building a backend really quickly and really easily for to, that you can use to develop against. So it's not for unit testing, although you can test against it. it it's two way, you can get rest data out of it and you can put data into it and it will persist. Uh, you can do it by setting up the data or you can do it by setting up code that returns the data. So it's pretty flexible. It's really easy to install. It's really easy to configure. And I've used it quite a bit. Uh, not as much as, you know, a professional, but I've used it for three or four different things just, just on my own. So I've found it to be really useful. Uh, here's how you install it. Uh, just run it from NPM. And the, ins the last slide is the docs. And the docs on this are really pretty good. It's just one big page and everything you need almost is in there. And those instructions are very plain. They tell you to run NPM with a dash G for a global install. I don't think you should do that. I don't know why anybody would want to do that, but maybe other people have different needs. I just want a local install so I can have it sitting in that directory and I can have uh, this installation set up for one project and another one set up for another project. And you don't have to do it that way, but I like having it that way. This will install just a local instance in a single directory for you. Uh, if you don't want that, just go to the docs and do it the way they say with the dash G. So? Yes? Are you going to bring up NPX? Yes. Okay. Because you have to, I think. So let's, uh, let's just go ahead and install it real quick. I'm just going to create a directory. Doesn't take long. Looks like any other NPM install. And when I look at it, I have a node modules and a package lock. So there's really nothing in here except the thing that I installed. The next thing we need to do is configure it. So we're going to create, oh, uh, uh, there, I, I didn't actually mention this. You can serve JSON REST data from this, but one of the things that I use it for more often is just a static file HTTP server. And so we'll set that up right quick. I'm just gonna create a new directory. I'll name it public because if I name it public, it's automatic. If I don't like the name public, I can change the configuration uh, to use whatever directory I want. But if I go into public and just say, I want, uh, yeah, it won't let me copy that. But. So I've just created an index document here. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll create some JSON data that we can pull from the REST call. And uh, I can't copy it out of my slides here, so I'm going to get it off, off the, uh, the web here. And this, what you see in the slide here is just a copy of what's on their documents page. So you'll have this exact document available. In the regular pressure here. Uh, okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions on this so far? Okay. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to run it. So because I didn't install it with the dash G option for global, NPM uh, doesn't, doesn't by itself know how to run this thing. I'd have to set up some scripts and things like that. So to, the whole point of using this thing is to keep things easy. So the easiest way to do this is to use the command line you see there, uh, NPX JSON server, and then pass it the JSON config file that I created. And NPX will go into the node modules and find the JSON server wherever it put it. I just run it from there. So, Phil? Yes? 
The reason I brought up NPX earlier is that you don't actually need to do the NPM install. NPX will take care of that for you. Well, you can add on to that at the end if you like, okay. because I didn't know that. This is just the way that I've done it. This is uh, uh, my knowledge about this, this application is based on a presentation I saw by a guy who didn't know how to use it and the documentation. So NPM is something that Dan knows a lot more about. So NPX, then the app name, then the config file. And what's gonna come up is uh, under resources and under home, you can see that it's running on localhost at port 3000. So if I Chrome it, I see my index.html file. How swell is that? And we didn't just create our static files. We added some JSON data. Now, if I put them side by side, I'm gonna just throw that a little bit. Now, if we put that side by side uh, with the JSON file here, uh, it's got a catalog of posts, a catalog of comments, and a singular profile there. So if I wanted to go and query posts, REST dictates that it would look like this. And if I want the first object that's in there, I can query it by ID. And I'm going to get the only record that's in there under posts. And it's going to say the, the actual line that you see there in the config file, if I did it right. So there it is, the ID, the title, and the author. Now, if I were to go into Postman, and I'm not prepared to do this, I could do it if you guys really want to see it, but if I go into Postman and do a post request and feed it a new record to posts, uh, to the posts catalog here, it will actually write that to my db.json file and, and that will make it persist. So you can use this for all manner of uh, 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 RESTful requests. Um, just for fun, why don't we try the others? But you should be able to predict what they look like. Where'd it go? There we go. Comments one and profile. Cool. So, any questions on that so far? So one of the reasons that I use this is, as I mentioned, I like to serve those static files. Uh, what I'm doing with that is I'll frequently get a customer who is not security conscious and says, why don't you just email me the password or the PEM key file? And I say, no, that's silly. That's not secure and I'm not gonna do it. Instead, I need to put it up somewhere where they can download it with, with HTTPS. And so I have, I have this set up in singular directories where I can put a PEM key file that only one person with the right URL can get to it and it'll be a secure download. <clears throat> and then when they're done with that, they can let me know and I can just take the thing down forever. So that's what I'm using it for. And I'll show you at the end of this presentation how I publish it to the web. But for right now, this is running on localhost, so only people on my network can get to it. And generally, you probably only want to get to it from say uh, a mobile phone or something like that, where you want to test an application that you're developing, uh, but it's, it's not able to get to your local host from there and you need to publish it. Uh, I'm sure there are a plethora of other reasons to use it, but that's what I'm using it for. Um, next, why don't we have a look at what's on the docs page? Oh, I've got some test slides here just for those who come after the presentation. Uh, in the slides, or sorry, in the docs, they show you how you can change the routes, customize the routes. You can, uh, instead of using that dbjson file to define the data that's returned, you can use a JavaScript function by putting it in a JS file. Or you can, also, not or, but in addition to that, you can add middleware that's written in JSON. And I don't have examples for some of that, but we're gonna look over it anyway. All of the parameters that, that are being specified on the command line can be added to the JSON server JSON file. 
with to override it without you know to, to make it more, more permanent uh, you don't have to specify it on the command line every time uh, here's what the custom routes look like on the left you've got a JSON document with some expressions and on the right are the corresponding translations so if you need to change the routes go ahead and write your route expression and I, I'm drawing a blank on where you put this though um, this goes in the routes.json file and I need to put that on the slide. Uh, I don't have a routes.json file in here. Uh, I'm going to just make a note real quick that I want to do that for posterity. There. Okay. Um, <clears throat> If you want to install middleware, and for those those who don't know, middleware is uh, a sometimes necessary, usually annoying, and kind of cool thing that you can do with most HTTP servers uh, or with the, the frameworks. <coughs> Sorry. Um, middleware is going to be a, a class or a module or a library or a system that intercepts all of your uh, your web requests and has the ability to modify the responses before they come to your web application, and likewise can intercept the responses from your web application and translate those in some custom way before they go out to the client. Uh, they can be very expensive if they hit every you know, every request, and so some systems have a way to filter which requests will get the middleware and whatnot. I haven't seen that there's a, a filtering mechanism in there like this. You just have to put an if block in your middleware to say, if this re request is relevant to my middleware, then do stuff with it. And that's no problem. Uh, I mentioned before that the docs were pretty complete. In the docs, they have, I'll just drag it over here. We're gonna cover the docs at the end, but um, they just have an example that adds a header. And really this is probably a very common thing that you'd wanna do. So they just look at the response object and dot header and pass in the header name and the header value and then pass it on to the next middleware because you can have multiple middlewares and they'll go in order and they'll chain each other uh, and pass that request and response through. Um, if, you're, if you really need middleware, I wonder if JSON server is really the right solution for you, but you, you know it's flexible enough if you need to use it for that, you can. And if you add middleware, here's how you run it with that parameter, and I've got that here on the slide as well, I think. Yes, right there. I didn't have a slide or an example for implementing your data with a JSON, with, sorry, with a, a JavaScript object, a JavaScript function, but they cover that in the docs as well, and I should add a slide for it. But the only difference really is that you run the, uh, the npx command with the J, J, JS file instead of the JSON file, and I thought I had this more complete. I apologize. There we go. So if you wanted to create a, J a JavaScript file to re return JSON data, uh, you can do it right here in this, and they document it pretty well. There's not much to it. Uh, all they're doing in here is they create, a, they start with a, a JavaScript object literal and they uh, just put some data on it and return that JSON object. Uh, and that's exactly what's going to come out in your browser. So pretty simple, very native. Um, and like I said, that would be in lieu of this parameter right here, db.json. You'll just put in the file name for your JS file. Okay. Now, uh, if you want to expose this over HTTP, ngrok is the one that I first used and it works just fine. Um, one of the annoyances of it is that you have to run a second window to do this. But up here I'm running uh, my JSON server and then down here I'll just go to um, the same directory you can see all that stuff is in there and I'll do an NPM, oh, not an NPM install. Uh, I'll go to 
and Grok's website. And I'll just download a Windows. And then I'll save it to where I need to save it. And uh, it's just a zip that contains three files. Oh, one file. I thought it had a document with it too. Maybe this is an older version of it. Uh, but it just contains this exe. I just copy that exe into this directory. And it's as simple as that, it's installed. And now when I run ngrok, I get, you know, just what you expect. Uh, it wants um, a protocol and then a port. And I'm just gonna run ngrok uh, not 80, 3000, because that is what I see up here. And it's gonna give me a reasonably ugly, but usable URL in HTTP and another one in HTTPS. And if anybody wants to hit that with their phone right now, just because I can't screen share quite the way I want to with a device that's not on my network, uh, they should be able to see my hello world. And so this is the URL that I would give to the customer that I want them to download that secure data. And when they're done, all I've got to do is terminate the NGROC and it's cut off from the world. So it looks like somebody's hit it. We have a request. So you can see those 200 OKs and those 404s coming through. The 404 is just the Favicon, uh, which of course I didn't put in the public directory, so it's gonna be knocked down. And the 200s are those of you who are getting a proper response. Cool. Um, I'll just leave that up, I guess, but. Uh, that's the end of this presentation, I think. Oh, well, almost. Uh, there, wasn't, there was an instance where NGROC was not working for me, and I forget why, but I couldn't, it wasn't, it, the HTTP was working, but the HTTPS was not. And so as an alternative, I started looking through lists to see what else I could use. And the one that I came up with was Local Tunnel. And I don't know that it's the best alternative or not, but I know it's one that I used and it worked. Uh, Local Tunnel works pretty much the same way that NGROC does. Uh, the only difference is... <clears throat> Local tunnel, as I recall, and I wish I had the time to do a screenshot of it or something. When you go and hit the, uh, the URL that I'm trying to publish, uh, local tunnel puts up an ad page first. And so that was annoying, but in a pinch, it works. So it, it took my data, exposed it over the ports that I wanted with a single command line, pretty much the same deal. But uh, they had to click, uh, click through that ad to get to the actual URL on the client side. So if you can use NGROC, use NGROC first. If it doesn't work for you, you can try a local tunnel or you can go and look up lists of these uh, uh, free proxies and you know pick one that you like instead. So that is the end of the presentation for JSON server. Uh, Dan, what do you want to tell us about NPX? Uh, sure. that, was, that was it. Just what I brought uh, up earlier. You, you don't have to use the NPM install. You can just do the NPX command and it will do... Yes all that stuff. Let's do it. What am I typing here? Just JSON dash server and then whatever file you're trying to serve or you would need the DB jet JSON or you would need public or something. If the file is like that, just doesn't it create one? Uh, which file? The db.json. If that doesn't mm. exist, wouldn't it create one? I thought it did, but when I ran it last week, it did not. So I, I thought it did the first time I used it, and I thought the docs told me that it would, but I couldn't find that. So it's a good question, and I'm not going to say yes or no, but I am going to say that my NPX didn't work. No, the NPX worked because you can see that it actually yeah, tried to run. Right. The loading it just doesn't like my file. So it doesn't like your file. That's okay. Yeah, good to know. So if you only ever want, so if you only want to run this once, which is actually kind of my my uh, mo for this, this might be the better way to go. Cool. Hey, Phil, just have uh, 
interest. I did MPX and then I did uh, JSON server, db.json, having no db.json, completely fresh directory. It created a db.json for me. Okay. Not sure what went wrong with mine or if I was just looking at the docs or not, but that's good news. I thought that it would. <laughs> 